دعاء الافتتاح اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Oh Allah, I begin the glorification of you with praising you and you always guide us to the right out of your favoring upon us and I am certain that you are the most merciful of those who show mercy in situations of pardon and mercy but you are very exacting in situations of giving exemplary punishment and chastisement to the wrongdoers and you are the greatest omnipotent in the domain of absolute power and might O oh Allah, you have permitted me to pray and beseech you. So listen, O oh, the all hear to my words of praise. And please reply my prayer, O oh, the all merciful. And please overlook my slips, O oh, the oft forgiving. You, O oh my God, have relieved so many of my griefs, and you have dispelled so many of my sorrows, and you have overlooked so many of my slips, and you have spread over me many of your mercies, and you have unlocked so many of rings of misfortunes in which I was detained. All praise be to Allah, who has not be taken wife or son, and who has no partner in the sovereignty. Nor has he any protecting friend through dependence, and magnify him with all magnificence. Allahu Akbar. All praise be to Allah with all gratitude for all his bounties, all praise be to Allah, who has no opposition in his rule, nor there is any challenge to his commands. All praise be to Allah, who has no counsel to meddle with his operation of creation, nor there is anything similar to him in his greatness. All praise be to Allah, whose commandments are active in the creation, and the praising of whom is incumbent. His glory is evident through His kindness. His distinct overflowing generosity is freely available. His unlimited bestowals do not exhaust, and He does not swell the numerous benefits except because of generosity and kindness. Verily, He is mighty, generous. O oh Allah, I ask, from, sir, I ask for some from much in the midset. O oh Allah, I ask for some from much in the midst of my many needs, from which I entirely depend on you, and you since eternity are able to do without them. But for me it is a titanic effort, and you and for you it is very easy and simple. O oh Allah, truly, as you pardon my sins, and you overlook my mistakes, and you take a lenient view of my disorderly conduct, and you cover up my foul actions, and you show consideration in spite of my transgressions committed willfully or neg negligently. All that tempted me to ask for that which I do not deserve from you on account of your mercy, and you may give me the daily bread, and you may provide me, and you may provide me with that which is suitable for me through your control, and you may distinguish me with favorable reply to my request. 
So I persist in calling out, believing in you, and I invoke you, talking familiarly, not afraid nor shy, but assured of your love and kindness whenever I turn to you. A temporary setback and I, out of ignorance, begin to despair, although perhaps slowing down may be a blessing in disguise, because you alone know all the consequences. I do not know a generous master who is more accommodating to the dissatisfied servants than you are to me. O Lord, you give an invitation, but I turn it down, and you become familiar with me, but I do not care for you, and you show affection to me, but I do not correspond to you, as if you are overreaching me, yet You do not abstain from having mercy upon me and doing favors to me and blessing me out of your magnanimity and generosity. So please have mercy on your ignorant servant and bestow upon him with the favors of your beneficence. Verily, you are generous and kind. All praise be to Allah, the owner of the sovereignty, who sets the scores of skies and the stars, who controls the winds, who causes the daybreak, and who administers the authority, the Lord of the worlds. All praise be to Allah for His indulgence, although He has full acquaintance with all things. All praise be to Allah for His amnesty, although He has full power over all things. All praise be to Allah for the respite He allows in spite of provocation. All praise be to Allah for the respite that He allows in spite of provocation. He is able to do whatever He wills. All praise be to Allah, uh, the creator of all created beings, who makes the sustenance freely available, who starts the day, who is the owner of glory, might, favors and bounties, and who is so far away that none of us can ever see him. And in the same time he is so near that he is fully aware of even the whispering secrets. Blessed the exalted be he. All praise be to Allah who has no equal to challenge him, nor is there an image comparable to him, nor is there a helper to assist him. He tames the powerful by his force, and disgraced are the great ones before his greatness. So he through his power fulfills that which he wills. All praise be to Allah who gives answer to me whenever I call him. And he covers up my shortcomings yet I disobey him. And he gives me the largest, largest part of the bounties yet I do not show his gratitude. Many and auspicious favors has he given me, and many a terrible dangers has he turned off, and many a blossoming joys had, had he made available for me. Therefore I sing his praises and recite his glorifications, and mention him with exaltion. Exalt- and mention him with exaltation. All praise be to Allah, whose, whose screen cannot be penetrated, and whose door is not blocked, and whose beseecher is not rejected, and uh, one whom hopes... All praise be to Allah, whose screen cannot be penetrated, and whose door is not blocked, and whose beseecher is not rejected, 
and one who hopes him is not disappointed all praise be to allah who secures the frightened ones who comes to the help of the upright ones who promotes the cause of the weak ones annihilates the autocrats who destroys rulers and appoints in others instead all praise be to allah the eradicator of the tyrants the terminator of the unjust ones the catcher of the fugitives the punisher of the unjust ones the aid of the seekers of aid the settler of the needs of the beseechers and the support of the faithful believers all praise be to allah in his awe inspiring fear the heavens and its dwellers tremble and shiver and the earth and its inhabitants shake and quiver and the oceans and all that which float and swim in their waters flow together in excitement and tumult all praise be to allah who has guided us to this we could not truly have been led aright if allah had not guided us all praise be to allah who created but is not created he and all praise be to allah who creates but is not created and he gives subsistence but is, but he needs no provisions and he gives food to eat but he takes no nourishment and he makes the living dead and he brings the dead to life but he is the ever living there is no death for him in his hands is all the good and he is able to do all things o oh allah please do send blessings on muhammad your servant and messenger and your confidant friend and beloved intimate and the choicest of your created beings and the bearer of your sacraments and the quotient of your and the quotient of your messengers with the most superior the most exquisite exqu- with the most superior the most exquisite the most handsome with the most superior the most ex ex with the most superior the most exquisite the most handsome the most perfect the most upright the most prospering oh allah please do send blessings on muhammad your servant and messenger and your confidant friend and beloved intimate and the choicest of your created beings and the bearer of your sacraments and the quotient of your messengers with the most superior the most exquisite the most handsome the most perfect the most upright the most prospering the most pleasant the most thoroughly purified the most sublime the most and the best blessings advantages mercies affections and salutations that you have ever made available to any one of your servants and prophets and messengers and choicest people and those honored by you from among your created beings o oh allah please send blessings on ali the commander of the believers and the successor of the messenger of the lord of the worlds your servant your beloved representative and the brother of your messenger and your decisive argument over the mankind and your most important sign and the great news from you and please do send blessings on the truthful pure lady fatima Uh, the best of women of the world and please do send blessing on the sons of the mercy to the world the two leaders of true and guidance the two, the two leaders of true guidance al hasan and al husain the two chiefs of the dwellers of paradise and please do send blessings on the leaders of the muslims ali ibn al husain ومحمد ابن علي وجعفر ابن محمد وموسى ابن جعفر 
وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والخلف الهادي المهدي Those imams, your decisive arguments over your servants, your trustworthy confidence in your lands, blessings that are numerous and non-stop. O oh Allah, please do send blessings on the custodian of your commandments, the vigilant guardian, the reliable patron, the, and the awaited justice, and please surround him with your favorite angels, and assist him with the Holy Spirit, O oh, the Lord of the worlds. O oh Allah, please choose him to be the caller to your book and the for establisher of your religion and make him succeed in the earth as you caused those who were before him to succeed and establish for him his faith which you have approved of him and give him in exchange safety after the fear He serves you, he ascribes nothing as partner to you. O oh Allah, please give him power and authority and through him strengthen the people and give him the necessary assistance and through him support the people and help him with a mighty help and make him prevail over all with easiness and delegate him your controlling authority. O oh Allah, please give her currency to your religion and to your prophet's traditions through him, so that nothing which is just and genuine is kept concealed from any one of the human beings. O oh Allah, we ardently desire that you confer upon us a respectful government through which you may reactivate Islam and stimulate its followers and humble and humiliate the impostors and their double-dealing shams and include us among those who invite people to the obedience uh, to you and lead them to your approved path and give us the good of this world and the world to come. O oh Allah, let us bear out and hold up oh, that which you make known to us as the truth and let us be fully aware of that which is which we fall short of doing O oh Allah through him set in order our disorder gather and unite our flock stitch together our ripped open separation Turn our want and poverty into enough. Lift us up from our degradation. Free us from our misery. Pull us out of from our debts. Set up our proper poverty. Fill the gap created by confusion amongst us. Let our difficulties be easy to deal with. Refine our substance and style. Untie our ropes and straps. Let our efforts succeed well and secure success. Make us fulfill our promises. Give answers to our prayers. Listen to our requests. Cause us to obtain the good of this world and the hereafter. Give us much and more than our expectations. O oh, the best of givers and bestowers. And cleanse our hearts. Unburden our emotions from hate and anger. And in the event of dispute in the matter of truth, show us the right path. Verily you guide whoever you will to the right path. Let us through him get the better of your enemies and your opponents. O oh, the true God, be it so. O oh Allah, we complain to you about the departure of our Prophet, your blessings on him and on the household, and about the absence of our leader, and about the big numbers of our enemies, and about our few number, and about widespread disorder, and about vicissitudes of time against us. So please do send blessings on Muhammad and his household, and help us overcome all that through victory from you that you expedite, 
and through relieving us from our injuries and uh, your and through your help that you confirm and through bringing in the rule of justice and fair play and through mercy that you expand over us and uh, through good health that you cover us with out of your mercy O most merciful of those who show mercy bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin A'udhu billahi s-sami'u l-alim min ash-shaytan l-ayn r-rajim Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Khalik al-Samawati wal-Ard Ilahan wahidan ahadan samadan lam yattakhi s-sahibatan wala waladan Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrif al-anbiya'i wal-mursaleen Khatim al-Nabiyyin rahmatu lil-alameen آها وياسين أبي القاسم محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المظلومين المنتجبين ورحمة الله على محبيهم ولعنة الله على عدائهم مجمعين من يومنا هذا إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال الله سبحانه وتبارك في كتابه الحكيم وفرقانه المجيد وقوله الحق بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد respected sisters and brothers my youngsters my elders Viewers, Assalamu alaikum jamia wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace and blessings be upon all of you. We once again wanted, I want to take a moment to appreciate and acknowledge the organizers of these discussions, all those who have contributed towards the, in the uh, name of their deceased, in the name of their marhumin. I want to appreciate all of that. And we have tried to make this possible for those who uh, can benefit from the sign language. I want to thank... Uh, our sign language uh, interpreter, translator, um, Kate, for her efforts. May Allah bless all of you and keep all of you safe, inshallah. As we continue our discussion on these verses, on the verses of Surah Qadr, the surah, the chapter of power, the chapter that talks about the grand night, the holy night, the honored night, the night of destiny. As I mentioned in our previous discussion, there's numerous translations for the word other. And each of them are correct in their own way. I'm not saying any of them are incorrect, but they symbolize something very, very important. And where I left off yesterday in the discussion was that, do you, you know, we have not been told in this surah, anywhere in that surah, what was revealed. Because the verse starts out the, after Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, the very first verse talks about a revelation of something. Something was sent down. Something was sent down. And so we were not told what was sent down. We were not told when is the Laylatul Qadr. We only know that it's a very special month, um, a very special night. And in that night, very special things happen. Our destinies are being prepared. Our lives are being sort of laid out and sorted out. And we get a lot of divine reward and thawab for Laylatul Qadr, for doing worship, for worshipping Allah on Laylatul Qadr. And that is why in many of the books of Dua, books of supplication, like Mifatihul Jinan, the uh, book that is called the um, uh, the Keys to the Heavens, in Mifatihul Jinan and in various other books, we've got a lot of amal to be done on Laylatul Qadr, on the night of Hour. There are various Quran actions, acts of worship, there are supplications to be recited, there's various uh, salah prayers to be recited, there's a special ziyarah of uh, Abu Abdullah al Hussein, Imam Hussein, a special salutation on Imam Hussein, uh, and this is exclusively for Laylatul Qadr, okay? 
So, and you can find this in, in the books of Dua. Uh, one very, very good source is Duas.org. Duas.org has got supplications for all throughout the year, special days, special events, special days of the week, special months of the year, including Laylatul Qadr, and every night of the month of Ramadan, various daily Duas. It's all available, and you know, may Allah reward the uh, those who have made this uh, available to the believers. A very, very uh, monumental effort at Duas.org, and we have some very, very beautiful sites that we can get authentic uh, information in Islam. Al-Islam.org is another very reliable and uh, a source with integrity of getting you know, access to Islamic literature and questions to various Islamic issues that um, people may, may face. So basically we had left off at uh, this verse where it says that Laylatul Qadri Khairum Min al Fishar. It is greater than a thousand months. According to some commentators and Nurul Quran Fi Tafsir Al Quran, um, the enlightened commentary into the light of the Holy Quran mentions that one time the Prophet of Islam had a dream and that thousand months was told in that dream he saw the Banu Umayya, the most oppressive people of their time, were ruling over the Muslim community and pretending to be Muslim they were ruling over them for a thousand months, so approximately 80 some years. And so some commentators have pointed towards this, some have pointed towards the, the, the amount and the significance of somebody's whole lifetime. You know, average lifestyle, lifetime is about 80 years, give or take. And so it talks about an, an entire lifetime of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some commentators have also alluded to um, some individuals who have been worshipping Allah for a thousand months, you know, basically their whole life, and their thawab and their divine reward was um, you know, with Allah and the respective prophets of the time. So there's a number of reasons for this uh, Al-Fishahar, thousand months. But as we continue, we see that it is a very important night. So what we can conclude at this, at this level, up until now, is that it can be any night in the whole year, right? It can be any night in the entire year. And if we really want to get the benefit of Laylatul Qadr, the benefit of the night of destiny, if we stay up every night of the year, inshallah, God willing, one of those nights will be Laylatul Qadr, and we will. I don't like to say hit the jackpot because that symbolizes you know, um, gambling and what have you. But what we would do is we would actually have the Laylatul Qadr and we would get it. Because remember, we have not been told what it is, when it is. But the whole Prophet of Islam, now I'll start getting into the answers that we have uh, left behind. The holy Prophet of Islam out of his infinite, out of his bless, mercy for the Ummah, for the community. And the Prophet has had a lot of care and concern for the Ummah. He had beseeched Allah for so many things for the community, to make forgiveness easier. And of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, answers his beloved Habib, his beloved messenger, his beloved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Peace be upon him and his family. So what basically happened is the Prophet said that Laylatul Qadr, this night of power, will be in the month of Ramadan. Will be in the month of Ramadan. And what was revealed, I'm going to come to that in a few minutes. So the Laylatul Qadr, it is important because destiny is there and it has become important because something was revealed, something very important, very powerful was revealed on the night of Qadr, the night of power. So that becomes now a little clear, right? I hope you're all with me, inshallah. And then the Prophet says it's in the month of Ramadan. Laylatul Qadr is the month of Ramadan. So if you look at the lunar calendar, there's 360 nights. Allah's Messenger said that, okay, instead of staying awake all 360 nights, Laylatul Qadr will be in the month of Ramadan, the holy month of Ramadan, the blessed month of Ramadan. Look for Laylatul Qadr in, in Ramadan. So out of 360, we have been, alhamdulillah, God be thanked, we have been now told that one of those 30 nights will be Laylatul Qadr. So we've got a massive discount, right? From 360, now only 30. But, Ya Rasulullah, O Prophet of God, we have jobs to go to, we have, well, not right now, right now in COVID-19, nobody is 
supposed to unless you're in an essential service and if you are may Allah bless you may Allah protect you inshallah if you're uh, self-isolating or staying at home because of safety and security inshallah you will be blessed as well and it's been a really interesting and a challenging time for the in for the believers especially in Ramadan when we always used to be with each other having a star dinner together praying together you know do, uh, doing our work acts of worship together it's been a real challenge and even for the scholars who are working and you know preparing lectures online and delivering those lectures for them also it's not been easy because you know it's 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 one thing to have an audience in front of you it's another thing to have just a tv screen or a computer monitor or a phone or a, just a you know a camera in front of you and then to try and you know, prepare a lecture and speak some scholars find this very very challenging inshallah may allah reward them all okay so we have been told that it's in the month of ramadan so from 360 we're down to 30. Then the Prophet helped to filter it even deeper. The Prophet then said, look for Laylatul Qadr in the last 10 nights of Ramadan. So not even the whole month, not even the 30, look for Ramadan, the Laylatul Qadr in the last 10 nights of Holy Ramadan. Thank you, Ya Rasulullah. Thank you, Ya Allah. We don't know how to express our gratitude. One time, Prophet Musa, السلام, Moses, peace be upon him, was saying that, Ya Allah, you have done so much. You have given me so many bounties. You have done so much. I don't know how to thank you. I don't know how to express my appreciation and my gratitude to you. And the revelation from the Almighty comes. He says, Musa, O oh Moses, that statement itself is a form of expression of gratitude. When you say to Allah, Ya Allah, I don't know how to thank you. Thank you, Ya Allah. I don't know how to express that in itself because of a great thanks. The Prophet Musa was told that that in itself is a way of appreciating Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah's message says the last 10 nights. Then even then, you know, I will complain. I'll say, Ya Rasulullah, I know it's in the last 10 nights, but it's still difficult. It's still a bit of a challenge. Can you give us a little more of a discount, huh? You know, and sometimes stores, they say, you know, especially when it's, uh, you know, December comes around or any of the special events come around, any special holidays, they say, oh, 50% off. And, you know, the Mother's Day gift and Father's Day gift and Grandfather's Day gift and, you know, this day's gift and that day gift and, and they say 50% off and 60% off and 70% off and 80% off. And some stores will say, okay, you know, 90% off. And have you ever gone to a store where they say 100% off, take what you want free? No, you say no. <laughs> those, those stores don't exist, do they? <laughs> no, no stores will tell you, this is 100% off, take it. No, 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 no. Maximum, maximum, you might get 80% off. Maybe if a store is in a good mood or if there is, you know, uh, something spoiling, something rotting, then they might say, okay, 90% off, but they cannot give it to you free. That is beyond, that goes beyond saying. Okay. So what we find is that Allah Ta'ala's messenger is giving us a really big discount from 360 down to 30, down to 10. Then even then the Prophet of Allah goes that you want to get the benefit of Laylatul Qadr. Look for Laylatul Qadr. Seek out Laylatul Qadr in the last 10 odd nights of Holy Ramadan. The last 10 odd nights of Holy Ramadan. That means it can be the 19th, the 21st, the 23rd, the 25th, the 27th, or the 29th. Down from 360 nights to stay awake, down to 6 only. And Ayatollah Puya, in his tafsir, in his commentary of the Holy Quran, he mentions, he said that one of the reasons why Allah's Messenger or Allah did not tell us exactly which night it is, is so that we don't become negligent. We don't become, you know, we don't uh, become negligent and we, we don't just take it for granted that, okay, it's this particular night or it's that particular night. I'm not going about the rest of the nights. Allah Ta'ala wants us to make sure we maintain our acts of worship on these, you know, six nights, inshallah, if possible, and do as much as we can. And that's why there is a strong recommendation on all of these six nights. And if you look at the books of Dua, supplication, you will find that there are various supplications to be recited in each of those six nights. So that we don't become negligent. We don't become, you know, uh, basically oblivious to the other nights. Keep this in mind. Yes, we know that in the, the Shia, the Jafri narrations, we've got a lot of emphasis on the 23rd night. 
And on the 23rd night, there's a lot of, you know, emphasis and there's a lot of, uh, you know, um, hidden uh, signs that, yes, it's alluding to the 23rd. But at the same time, we are told not to be negligent on the others, on the other nights, the other odd nights. So please keep that in mind as well. And so Allah's Messenger had made this great discount for us, made it easy for us. And then Allah Ta'ala in the Holy Quran continues, the Surah continues. We have not ended the Surah yet. It says one of the things that is happening on this night, فَنَزَّلُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ وَالرُّوحُ فِيهَا بِإِذْنِ رَبِّهِمْ مِنْ كُلِّ أَمْرٍ On this night, فَنَزَّلُ the, There is a dissension. There is a dissension of the angels and the spirits. So the angels and the spirits are descending on this night with the permission of their Lord, with the orders from their Lord. That they are descending. Now here, again, the commentators of the Quran have said something very interesting. And they have said that anazzalul is what we call an ongoing verb, ongoing tense it is. Okay? So how the verse, the surah started, inna anzalna, we revealed it, revealed with an ed. Here, the malaika, the angels and the spirits are descending, anazzalul, are descending, not descended, it's not past tense, it's ongoing tense. That means every year, on Laylatul Qadr, the spirits are coming down, the, the angels are coming down, they are bringing orders from their Lord, and where are they taking them? To whom are they going? Our fifth Imam, Imam Muhammad ibn Ali al-Baqar alayhi salatu was salam, peace be upon him, mentions that if anybody argues with you, he's telling the believers, if anybody challenges you, argues with you about the existence of Imam Mahdi, about the existence of the representative of Allah on this earth, give them this verse as a response. This verse is saying that the spirits and the angels are descending, the angels and the spirits are descending with the orders of Allah. To whom are they going to? To whom are they going? Are they coming to my house or your house? You say, no. I wish they would come to my house. I wish the angels would come to my house. But where are they going with these orders? Where are these orders being taken? And therefore, the fifth Imam says that they are going to Imam Mahdi, the awaited Imam, the living Imam, because he is Allah's representative on this earth. He is the one who is taking the orders, receiving the orders. The Malaika are descending to them with those orders, I mean, Amr, the Amr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so what that means is the commentators have said, the Holy Quran, the Holy Quran have said that they Basically, our files are being prepared. The orders of Allah are now being prepared. So we get a chance to put our input to what we want. If we want to increase in sustenance, we can ask for it. If we want good health, if we want long life, if we want to go for hajj, for the, for the pilgrimage, whatever. But at the same time, remember one thing. We are always told to remember others first. So even if I have an illness, I am told to remember others first, then pay for my own illness. If I want to increase in my sustenance, I'm ordered to pay for Allah, for, for others, to Allah, for others to increase, have their increase in sustenance, then pay for myself. If, for example, my daughter is not married, pay for everybody else's daughters, then pay for my own. Pay for their sons, then pay for my sons. So pray for everybody else, then pray for myself. The only exception to this is when we are asking for forgiveness, istighfar, forgiveness. That is the one case where we are told to ask for ourselves first, then ask for others. Okay? So this is one thing that I wanted to mention. And um, so basically, you know, this is a night of du'as, a night of our supplications being accepted. This is this is why when we are doing the amal, the acts of worship with the Holy Quran, when we're doing those amal, there are a number of times that we are told to pause and do hajat. Hajat means asking in any language we want, anything we want. It doesn't have to be from the Holy Quran, it doesn't have to be from the Hadith, it can be from our heart, whatever we want to ask for, we ask Allah. And we are encouraged. One of my teachers used to tell me that uh, tell the Muslim, tell the believers that look at this last year that has passed. Look at this last year that has passed. See what challenges we faced. See what difficulties we faced. And ask Allah to help us in the upcoming year, in the future year. And so when we do that, it gives us an opportunity to reflect and to think about.
And then, when the night is passing, as it's going, as it's going, then the verse and the this chapter, the surah of Qadr, ends by saying, Salamun hiya hatta matla al faj. Peace it is till the break of the dawn. Salamun hiya hatta. That at the time of the breaking of the dawn, the time of Fajr, the morning prayers, that means that the file is now complete, the file is now closed, there is peace, and the Malaika and the spirits have gone back with the file. So this is uh, just a very, very brief discussion on, on in two sessions on the chapter, the Surah Al-Qadr, the chapter of greatness, of honor, the chapter of destiny, and the chapter of grandeur. And we mentioned that now we've been told, we haven't touched upon, we haven't discussed what was revealed. Inna anzalna hu Surely we have revealed it on the night of Qadr, and, and that revelation of whatever has been sent down must be so important that the night of Qadr became the night of Qadr because of that. And so we can smile, and, and I'm sure that all of you have read and known that it was the Holy Quran that was sent down on the night of power, on the night of Qadr, on the night of destiny. The Holy Quran was revealed to the Holy Prophet wasallam on the night of Qadr. And that's what made it so good, so powerful. So the night of destiny, it made the night a special night amongst all the other nights in the entire year. It gave that night power, the revelation of the Holy Quran. The Holy Quran, which it itself mentioned that if it had been revealed on a mountain, the mountain would have crumbled into dust. The Holy Quran is the book of Allah, the essence of the message of Allah, the very word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is the Quran. Okay, and so this was revealed. The question that arises, and I'll inshallah end with this point, which will take a couple of minutes. The question arises that when we look at the books of history, we see that the Quran came down in chapters, in verses, step by step, little by little, verse by verse, chapter by chapter, over 13 years in Mecca and 10 years in Medina. So 23 years, the Quran was revealed step by step, verse by verse, chapter by chapter, you know, one by one, things came down. And then the Quran in, in this chapter, Surah Al-Qadr, the chapter of power, it says that we reveal it on one night. Is this, and then you know, those who are, who have got animosity and enmity to the Quran and to Islam, they say, see, this is a contradiction. History tells us that the Quran came down over 23 years, and then the Quran in another place is saying on the one night it was revealed. What do, see, this is a contradiction. This is, this is a misunderstanding that they've tried to propagate. In actuality, the Holy Quran was given to the Holy Prophet of Islam, sallallahu alaihi wa sallam, peace be upon him and his family, on the night of Qadr, on the night of power. Allah Ta'ala gave it to the Prophet because this was the final messenger, the final Prophet, the final message, and the Prophet had the ability to bear it because he was sent and delegated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet was given the entire Quran in one night. But for us as the Ummah, the community, we could not have already, we could not have borne it, we could have not have withstood it. It would have been way too much for us. So it came down in stages and steps and it came by chapter by chapter, verse by verse, different situations, different circumstances. And so it is not a contradiction. We have to just have a better understanding. For the Ummah, it came down in stages so that they were able to grasp it and absorb it and inshallah act on it step by step. The Holy Prophet was given the Holy Quran. The essence in the heart of the Holy Prophet, the Quran and Majid was already there. So when these nights of Qadr are before us, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to you know, make us better Muslims, make us better human beings, make us closer to Him inshallah. And we are always ordered to ask for forgiveness of our sins and shortcomings. So whenever we are doing the various recitations, whether we are doing the Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayh, I seek forgiveness from Allah. And you've heard these amals uh, being recited in these last couple of days as well in English. And we say Astaghfirullah.
I seek forgiveness from you. You are my Lord. I'm putting repentance back to you. We are told at that time to remember, not just recite it like a parrot, not just to try and recite it as quickly as possible, but to reflect, to think, and to remember our sins one by one, because the true steps towards forgiveness of our sins is when we remember the sins and our shortcomings and our disobediences to Allah. Then we can go to the next stage. If we just read it to, for the sake of reading it, and we just read it for the sake of getting it done, if we just read the Quran just for the sake of finishing it, we have not done justice to these acts of worship. We have not done justice to the Holy Quran. Have we tried to understand the Quran as it is meant to be understood? Have we tried to appreciate? The asking of forgiveness by remembering our sins and having tears in our eyes and saying, Ya Allah, I am asking for forgiveness for this, this, and this. This is these are the things that I've done. I have lied. I have backbitten. I have missed my prayers. I have not worn my hijab. I did not keep a beard. I did this violation. I might have stolen. I might have done this or that. Remembering the sins and then rectifying those sins. If I've stolen something, make sure I return it to the rightful owner. If I have backbitten somebody go and apologize to them isn't it better to get that sorted out in this world and have somebody upset with me or angry with me here and i go and apologize to them rather than having the accountability in the hereafter in the next world where it will be much more severe and the retribution will be much harder laylatul qadr reminds us of this while our thawab and our good deeds are multiplied and exalted so much we are told to remember and ask for forgiveness of our misdeeds as well, so that they are not pending on our account. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our deeds, especially on the nights of Qadr, and to make us closer to Him. And oh Allah, those who are ill, cure them from their illnesses. Those who have no offspring, grant them God-fearing good children. Those who have got children, who have got offspring, keep them on the right path, the path of Muhammad and Ali Muhammad and the path of the Quran and Majid. O oh Allah, our scholars, the ulama who are serving while the imam is in occultation, grant them a long and healthy life and safety in the service of the Ahlul Bayt and Islam. O oh Allah, we ask you to return our imam, Imam al hujja In these nights, we pray for the imam's reappearance quickly and we pray that we are ready for the imam, we are genuinely ready for the imam, inshallah, and that we will be amongst the helpers and the uh, ansar of the imam and that we will see Zaman al Zuhur with our own eyes, the year of reappearance. Rabbana, taqabbal minna, inna ka tassamil alim. O oh, our Lord, accept this from us so surely you are the knowing and the seeing wassalamu alaykum jameeun wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh peace and blessings of allah be upon all of you اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم the 14 Muslim means of Torah as to live by the Quran they are the best examples for us to copy and to follow oh Allah help us be like the masumin who you love the most like prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وعلى وسلم give us the most excellent manners like Ali عليه السلام Make us brave and ready to do what makes you happy. Like Fatima السلام, let us be kind and caring towards our parents. Like Hassan السلام, help us to be calm and forgive. Like Hussein السلام, keep us with the truthful. Like Zainul Abideen السلام, keep us busy in remembering you. Like Muhammad al Bakir, give us knowledge that is useful. Like Jafar al Sadiq السلام, make us Appreciate the amazing world you have created. Like Musa al Kadim help us control our anger. Like Ali al Rada, make us pleased with whatever you have planned for us. Like Muhammad al Taqi, make us of those who have taqwa. Like Ali al Naki, help us lead the Muslims towards good. Like Hassan al Askari, help us to use our time in preparing for the 12th Imam. And like your Hujja Al Mahdi, Ajarallahu Ta'ala Faraja, may Allah hasten his reappearance. May we bring peace by acting on the teachings of the Quran and Ahlul Bayt.